Hello folks, welcome back to the IB and Andy Fishing Channel and welcome back to Review Tuesday. IB, we haven't done a Review Tuesday in a wee while. Oh, quite a while, yes. We haven't done a video in quite a while as well. <laughs> We're getting back into it, I promise. We've got a few bits and pieces coming up, haven't we? Already recorded. Yes. Stuff going on, more stuff coming. We've both got a little bit more time going for us. There's going to be more vlogs, more reviews, more stuff coming up very soon. So make sure you hit the subs button before you watch the rest of this video. So like I say, Review Tuesday and one that we've been working on actually for a while now, this hasn't it? Definitely something that's featured in a good number of vlogs now. Uh, something that you in particular have used an awful lot. Probably for the last four or five months, constantly. And I mean constantly. And I don't use things constantly that I don't like. And on that, I think we'll dive straight into it. So you'll already know what this is from the thumbnail and the description. But just in case you've landed here by accident, this is going to be our review of the Grade GR80 Streamflex. 10 foot, four weight rod. Uh, first off, before we get onto the rod, I think we just need to spend a minute talking about why we prefer to use a 10 foot four weight. So at first, I thought the idea for it was mainly to fish the Y because we can't wait there. So having that bit of extra length, it's actually really helpful to avoid the margins right next to you so you don't get entangles, to avoid the first current line so you get less drag. That was really helpful. But now I'm using uh, 10 foot four weight on all my rivers, even what I can wade. I honestly don't know why I wasn't using it before. It's so much easier. Yeah, do you know what, the yeah, number of benefits, uh, we use nice long leaders as well, yeah. don't we? we? We start at about 15 foot and go on from there and they're always landing with little crinkles. That's the whole idea, it protects your drag. So having the longer rod means that when you go to strike, actually you're picking off line more efficiently. You've got a longer lever. They're better for mending. You can throw a longer mend with these generally. I just think in terms of control, I don't think you can beat the 10 foot four weight. And actually I've started to notice a lot more people now switching over to the longer rods, but specifically for you guys who are fishing waters that you can't wait. So I'm, fishing, I'm thinking the Southern Chalk Streams, uh, the River Wire ran by us. I think possibly Drafil Beck in Yorkshire. I don't think those guys can wait. Or if you're fishing larger freestone rivers, you're going to want to check this out. So onto it, the Grays GR80 Streamflex 10 foot four weight. Took a while, didn't it? I know, yeah. <laughs> it is quite a long name. <laughs> so it comes in a Cordura tube, pretty standard these days. I actually like the tube because I don't like the flimsy bags. Partition tube rather than a rod bag is pretty straightforward and I'll take each bit out individually. Obviously it's a four piece, almost all the fly rods that are on the market these days are four piece. There's another bit in there somewhere that I've lost. So yeah, Grace GR80 Stream Flex 10 foot 4 weight, it's four piece IB, talk us through it. First of all, it's quite pleasant to the eye, isn't it? It's a very non-offensive colour. They say it, it's olive, but to me, I think I can only see olive in like a certain type of light. Everywhere else when I look, that's probably partially because I'm blind. It just looks like grey. It's pretty standard. <laughs> it's a pretty standard grey looking fishing rod, isn't it? I mean, when we're talking about the Streamflex, we are talking about one of the iconic ranges of fishing rods. This is one of the iconic rod ranges that's lasted now for over 25 years in the grey stable. And they generally play pretty safe with it, but that's important because that's all it needs to be. These are utility rods at the price they are. It doesn't need to be anything flash. So props to grey straight away for not going too crazy on it. Uh, if we start down at this end, Greys have got yep. their own kind of custom real seat on there. It's a double locker. Uh, don't know about you, but it's I never... a little stamp as well. Nice little stamp on the bottom. I never had any issues with the real seat no, at all. No, I had once, like the, the bottom screw will come undone, but never the second, the top well, one. That's, that's why they use so. a double locker, eh? So yeah, real seat, nice and functional. That works really well. Really nice bill wood insert there. It's quite pretty, actually. It's quite a nice piece of wood. You never see it. You never look at it. But it is there. Not something you see on every single river rod, this, but actually I like having the little fighting butt on a 10 foot rod. Yeah. It just gives you something to put in against your wrist if you're making a longer cast or when you're playing fish and stuff like that. I don't find it as terrifying, like if I'm having to put my rod down. Yeah, good call. So yeah, ab absolutely fine with that. The handle is a regular half weld. I didn't find it too big or too small, did you? No, it's fine. It's pretty it's much actually quite comfortable. Pretty much the right size. So at the back there, we've got a little bit of um, composite cork, I imagine, just to protect the edges. That's pretty common these days. Grace described the cork as being AAA quality. I'm not really sure that means these days. I will say there are a couple of fairly big bits of filler in there that actually have started just to move around a little bit. It's not the end of the world. And I have used it. It's been used a lot, yeah. It's not the end of the world. It's never been cleaned. It's never been treated. There's a little bit of filler in there, I guess, at the price range you kind of expect it. Good quality cork is actually getting harder to find these days. Uh, but that one piece of filler there in particular, it's not moved out yet, but it is starting to thin a little bit. It's not the end of the world. It really isn't. It's just, if I'm 
we're going to be picky here, aren't we? Because otherwise... You're picky. I never even noticed until I said, and I use that word every day. Well, the, pro the problem we've got is that everything else about the rod is absolutely freaking brilliant. Yeah. So <laughs> we've got to find something. And that bit of filler there is a little bit bigger than maybe you'd expect on a rod at this price, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, keep a ring on there. In terms of appearance on here, in terms of branding, it's pretty much as you'd expect. Gray's GR80 Streamflex 10 foot 4 weight. It has got the 3M power look symbol on there. That's clearly the technology they're using for the blank. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to shout about down there, Can which I, I like. Can I say my favourite bit about the rod? Yep. Apart from it being a really nice cast. It has little white dots for you to join the rod sections together. Oh, so you, you like a line of dots, don't you? It can never be outlined, because I, I usually hate being that person that like goes around and like looks it's all straight <laughs> and I think on one of my rods that I was using before people you remember people in the comment section was like IB is your um, uh, rod ring is that then on purpose, like, no, I just literally never check anything on the rod. Oh, you see, yeah, yeah, a lot of people really like that. Uh, I am a twister. I do actually twist the book, the book guide of my rods out at about 45 degrees, maybe, to the reel, just for, for uh, helping get distance, keep the line off the blank and stuff like that. But it really doesn't matter. Line of lines are nice to have there. Uh, we've got one stripper guide, and then the rest of it are nice, lightweight, single legs, um, whipped with a slightly darker thread than the colour of the blank. I haven't found any issues at all with the whippings, no bubbles in the varnish or anything like that. One thing I'm going to point out very quickly with the book guide is that Greys have very definitely, on purpose, put this book guide as far down the blank as possible. Now, we don't use a 10 foot 4 weight to nymph with, and we haven't nymphed with this rod, actually. One of those things we probably could have done. But by putting that book guide right down at the bottom of the section, as far as they possibly can, it's actually made it a little bit more nymphing friendly. You can see there, there's not a huge amount of distance there between the reel and the book guide. So if that's something that bothers you, and it's one of my things actually, isn't it? I like, I like to have a book guide on a nymphing rod down here so you haven't got to grab too far to pick up any line on the shoot. I think they've done that on purpose. I can't confirm it, but that's quite unusual to have a book guide right at the bottom end of the section. You notice that first, like, first thing when you touch the rod. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So props to Grey's. There's someone there who's done a lot of thinking because that is an important feature. Obviously, the most important thing about any fishing rod is the blank. Now, obviously, this blank has got some of this 3M Powerlux technology in it. Uh, Grace described this as a medium fast, which I think is probably about right. It's definitely a lot faster than what I was using before. Yeah, you were using that Sierra Surge, weren't you? Yeah. That was a 10 and a half foot, so slightly different rod, and it was a three weight, so slightly lighter, but that, that was quite a medium action rod. Uh, the Sierra Brook that I use for most of my guide, and it's definitely faster than that as well. And I think we both found, actually, that there was a little period of kind of getting used to the rod again. Oh, 100%, and not just with casting as well, but like even with hooking into fish and playing the fish, especially a grayling, it took a little bit, um, just, yeah, just kind of getting used to it. I don't know about you, though. Once I got used to it, I actually preferred it. I found particularly fishing at range, because it's a little bit faster, I could pick line up for a strike yeah. far more quickly than I could with the medium action rod. There was a little period of adjustment for me, but actually I think the action on the rod is very, very sensible. And because it's a little bit faster, again, it'll be a slightly better nymphing rod for it. So I can see why they've done that. In terms of how it feels, this is always a really hard thing to describe because the rod feels different to everyone. And this is something that actually you might not be able to relate to. So excuse me if this cuts you out for the next minute. The rod, fe <laughs> the rod feels, the, the blank feels very, very similar to some of the blanks that Hardy used on the original Cintrix models, the Zeniths. It has that same kind of chewiness to it, and it's, it's very fast to recover. I do just wonder if some of the technology that's been put in the blank of this might possibly be secondhand hardy, hardy rod technology. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, because that was, again, one of the great rod ranges of all time. And I feel like this, this felt to me a similar kind of action, and just as good as the Hardy Zenith Cintrix range, which were brilliant rods. You know how it feels to me? Go on. Like a rod. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of what we've used the rod for I, I don't know about you I've only used this to fish dries in same, As, uh, same quite a lot of different situations so I used this on the Lathka which is a tiny little stream that we can't wade I've used this on a Dove which is a slightly bigger river where we can wade I've used it on the Dirt which is a much bigger river again how about you have you been able to use it for different kind of situations I've used it everywhere I, I've used it on um, the dove the lower dove the upper dove the middle dove the wide the Durban, pretty much everywhere where I went that's I'm not joking that's the only rod I've used since like the second or third week of April 
and I fished quite a bit. Like there was a period where I fished non-stop for yeah. a long period of time. And that's literally the only rod that I had. And that's the way I preferred to roll. And I've used four different li lines on it as yeah. well. So like we have tested it. We have gone through its paces. And you know, I've caught grayling. I've caught trout. I've caught bigger trout, thankfully. I've caught tiny little fish. So it is, it is a really nice rod. Of the lines that you've used with it, which one did you think suited it the best? I really like the Arctic Silver one, the yep. one that you have, yep. and I don't have. I really want it, and it's not giving it to me. <laughs> um, and then I really liked um, the Airflow one. I don't know what it's called. It's the the grey one. Oh, the, the oh, delicate tape, tactical tape, the new Airflow tactical tape. Yeah, that casts absolutely nice. It might the line might be a, a little bit too heavy for the rod. It's a five, isn't it? That line. But that's more of my fault for getting the wrong line <laughs> than the rod's fault. But yeah, I think that's all right. I thought that Arctic Silver line suited it really well. That Arctic Silver line is quite heavy. It, it it's listed as a four, but actually. To AF AFTM, it's probably more like a four and three quarters or a five. But I'm, it it I really like the Arctic Silver line on this rod, and of the of all the lines that we used, and it was four or five at least, wasn't it in total? That was definitely the one I preferred. It's around about a ten gram head. It's quite a short head as well. Not into big long headed lines because we're throwing long leaders. Nice short head to flip that long leader over, and that for me worked really really well in terms of casting styles. Uh, well. I think we both did a bit of everything with it. I mean, yeah. you've been you've been booming out roll casts. I was about to say, tell you what, with this rod, I can make a banging roll cast, <laughs> and I mean it, not just like oh, it's just beautiful. I mean to 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 fly miles. Like some of the roll casts that I made to catch, like some of the fish on the dove. Yeah. Like, I've literally had to get to the other side of the river, and this rod just helped me so much. It's very enjoyable. Like, it's hard to describe. It's really enjoyable to cast the rod. I think it helps. Perhaps it's because it's helping me cast. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree, actually. Uh, the session that really convinced me on this was the one on Lathkill, because you've got to be really accurate on the river. There is no margin for error, and don't get me wrong, I made a lot of errors. But I was able to drop this thing on an absolute sixpence when I needed to. Uh, there was no kind of lateral wobble, there's no like crazy counter flex or anything like that. Where you point the line is where you feel like everything's going to go, and that's not always the case with 10 foot 4 weights, because they, they can be a little bit too soft. Again, I think that's possibly down to the fact that it's a little bit faster than the rods we've been using previously. In terms of comparing it to the rods we've used more often, particularly in the last couple of years, uh, I'd say this definitely is an upgrade on the Sierra Brook. It's a different rod, it is faster, and it's 100 quid more expensive. It should be an upgrade, but I reckon there is 100 quid's worth of difference between this and the brook that I've been fishing most often in the last couple of years. How about you? Oh yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, I just think I like the bit that it's a bit faster. It's a more expensive rod, like it has to be better. If it isn't, then I would be really disappointing. I, th I think there is a justifiable difference in the quality and action the of the rod. finishing is nicer yeah. as well, like yeah, everything yeah. is a bit better, but that, that you would expect that from a rod that costs more. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And you know, we're not talking premium, premium price here. I mean, we just had a quick flick through the internet and the, the price seems to be 299. I'm not 100% sure it's the retail price, but the price that we're finding people sell these at is 299. So, you know, we're not talking, we're not talking a Hardy Sage Loomis price here at all. This is gonna, definitely a mid-range rod. It's not going to break the brand, but it is still pricey. Ab absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And at that price, you'd expect it to be backed up with a bit of warranty cover. And this one is, so when you buy the rod, it'll come with the Hardy Graves paperwork on the side of it for the worldwide extended warranty so we check that out on the Gray's website and basically for the cost of 30 quid if you break a section they'll send you a new one which I think is quite good yeah that's I think quite good. I think 30 quid is pretty good as long as they've got them in stock I think that's perfectly fair if you break a section 30 quid to get a new one sent to you you have to send a bit back to them because they have to match it up yeah absolutely they? yeah but they'll send a section back to you for 30 quid I think that's absolutely fine so given the price given how much you've used it yep given what you've got out of it yep Worth 300 quid? Oh, 100%. Definitely. Definitely. It's a, it's a really beautiful rod. I just look I just look at this, and I haven't, haven't fished with it. I look at this and think, if I was fishing the chalk streams regularly, or, or fishing the wire regularly, as I do, fishing somewhere where you can't wade, specifically, I'm not sure how much more rod you'd ever need than that. I just think it's bang on. I think it's perfect. I think the action's sensible. The price is sensible. It's a normal weight. Uh, the fixtures and fittings are really high quality. The blank appears to be really good. It's been durable because it's had some stick. I just, I, I just think it's perfect for those anglers yeah. who are fishing from the bank. 
it's going to need a bit of a cultural change. I think in the UK we're a bit stuck on nine foot five weights, and actually that costs nine hundred quid. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I just don't think the nine foot five weight is the rod that people make it out to be. Um, sometimes people say with a four weight, oh, some of the fish we catch are quite big. I'm a bit worried about about four weight being stiff enough. But actually, because it's ten foot down here, that rod is incredibly stiff. I've got big fish on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a cultural thing, but I am starting to notice more and more people these days are going out, uh, particularly on rivers that you can't wade, but also rivers that you can with the longer 10 foot forward. Just make it easier for yourself. Like there's no, it's only going to be easier. Yeah, it's I agree. It's a sensible option. I agree. I think Gray's GR80 Stream Flex, 10 foot four weight for me, for those guys who are fishing the South Coast, fishing the chalk streams, fishing places that you can't wade or for fishing bigger freed stones where you can wade. It's brilliant. It's absolutely perfect. I just don't, I find it very hard to believe there's a better rod for that on the market for 300 quid. all around good rod. Yeah, really, really good rods. I think it gets a massive thumbs up from the both of us. So fair play to Gray's because that is a bloody good fishing rod for 300 quid. That's if you've <laughs> if you've got 300 quid to spend on a, on a river dry fly fishing rod, please definitely go and check one of these out at retail. You're not going to be disappointed. On the strip they've been disappointed, it looks like I'm never using that again. No, no. And generally, like, we have so many rods in this house. And for me to keep using the same one all the time, it talks a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because even, even when you were like, oh, have a go with this one, try that one out. We need to test it. I want to your opinion. I'm like, no. No. <laughs> no, I like my grace. <laughs> I like my rod. So there we go. Great blank. Great fixtures and fittings. Good value for money. Yep. What more do we need? You need to get the rod. <laughs> On the other note, if you don't have 300 quid, buy any rod wood that you can afford and just go out fishing because that's more important. Talking about the rod, if you're interested in the Gray's GRET Streamflex, IB and I will leave some links in the description box below. Don't forget when you purchase stuff through those links, IB and I get a tiny, tiny little percentage of the, of the sale. It doesn't cost you any more, but it does mean that we can spend more money on microphones and cameras and all the stuff that we need to keep the channel moving. So thank you very much for the support in the description box. We really appreciate that. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you very, very soon in a actual fishing video. I know it's been a while. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you. And goodbye. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.